going on everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, today, you might be able to guess what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna make some sauce. Now when I say sauce, obviously sauce is kind of a generic term for kind of a whole Sunday, what would typically be a Sunday dinner, right? An Italian-American Sunday dinner. Let me preface this. Obviously, you see my last name, Centipani, or as it's technically pronounced, Centopani, which means 100 breads. An Italian last name, for sure. And um, my father's side of the family, full Italian. We are all born here. I was born here. I'm American, okay? I'm not going to go around and say, hey, I'm Italian, and act like a fucking chooch. But um, this is something that I grew up with. Um, and I'm sure a lot of things, traditions, they change, they become Americanized. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, hey, this is Italian food. Because to be accurate, this is probably more in line with what would be considered Italian-American food. But nonetheless, it's something that I love. And, okay, here's the hook. A lot of us, we have families. We have, um, you know, we find ourselves in situations where family's coming over. Uh, we've got a date, whatever the case may be. And you still want to eat reasonably well. You don't want to just sit down and eat a giant bowl of pasta. Or maybe you do, and that's cool. I'm not going to judge. Um, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it so I could still keep the meal fairly protein heavy and fill it with ingredients that do not mess with my stomach. So even when I'm eating off of my typical diet, okay, and I'm not professional uh, training for competitions anymore, but I still, after all those years uh, as a competitive bodybuilder, I still eat a certain way. And when I eat outside of that, a lot of times I feel lousy. So I try to stick to foods that I'm going to feel good eating. Uh, and when I have a meal like this, yes, I want to enjoy it, but I also want to feel good. Okay. So I'm not going to fill it with ingredients that are going to wreck my stomach or make me feel like a bag of ass. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Let's get started. Before we begin, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. Okay. What we're going to do today and maybe uh, an ingredient tour if you will. So the way I like to make sauce, and yes, I call it sauce. Let's, 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 let's discuss the elephant in the room before we go any further. Some people will call it gravy. Some people call it sauce. What's the right term? Who's to say? Personally, when I think gravy, I think something brown. I think something you're going to put on roast beef, something you're going to put on turkey. Okay. This is sauce. But some people will argue when it's just tomatoes, it's sauce. Once you add meat, it becomes gravy. I just, I can't, I can't bring myself to call it gravy. If you do, that's fine. Um, I feel bad for you, but we're going to call it sauce. So let's talk about the star of the show first and foremost, I suppose, right? The tomatoes. So are these San Marzano's? I, I don't even know. You want to know something? The whole San Marzano thing. You know, this is where you got to question things. San Marzano, this one little region in Italy, you mean to tell me they're cranking out tomatoes to supply all of the United States. The United States is a big country, okay? And the rest of the world, do you really think that those tomatoes are either A, from San Marzano, or do I believe they are what they say they are? No, I don't. And I'm going to tell you something else. Some of the best canned tomatoes I've had from California. All right, these, this happens to be a great brand. They make some of the best ketchup that I've ever had, okay? I picked these up. These are pretty good. They're pretty good. I'm not saying they're the best. I've had better, but I like these. I like these a lot, and I'm going to use these today. So there's the tomatoes. <clears throat> we are going to put in the sauce quite a bit of meat, right? So we got some mild or sweet Italian sausage, some pork chops. Look at these. Oh, you got strip loin on one side, the tender loin on the other. These are basically like pork chop porterhouses, pork, porker houses. So uh, those are going to be awesome. And we're going to cook this sauce for so long that this stuff is just going to start to fall right off the, the bone. The sausage, very nice. And I got some ground meat with which we are going to make meatballs. Now, for all the purists out there, 
saying, well, if you're gonna make meatballs, it should be a combination of beef, pork, and veal. I understand, okay? But I was pressed for time. There's also another place I prefer to get sausage. It's in Waterbury, Connecticut. to make some of the best you're ever gonna have. Um, I didn't have time to go running all over the place because when I go to the grocery store, um, they don't always have ground pork and veal. So I got some beef. You really want to do it up. You want to make yourself crazy. Go ahead. Do the trifecta beef, pork, veal. Just got beef today. And I did a small amount. I'm not looking to feed an army. I'm going to make meatballs with the ground beef, right? Now, I make my meatballs a little bit differently. Most people would make it with just straight breadcrumbs. I don't do that. A long time ago, geez, I was probably like 14 or so. I got a cookbook for Christmas. It was an Italian cookbook. And the woman, her recipe for making meatballs, she would use chunks of bread, okay? And that's how I started making them. That's how I make them ever since. And now when I make um, meatballs, if I add, because I do use some breadcrumbs, and it's really just to adjust the moisture in it. If I use too many breadcrumbs, you get like this, um, like pasty type of meatball, which is gross. When you make it with the bread chunks, the texture of it, they're lighter, they're fluffier, and they're just better. Um, but do not, do not put onion in my meatballs. Onion goes in meatloaf, okay? I'm not looking to make little meatloaf balls. I use a little bit of garlic, some parsley, some whole eggs, some breadcrumbs to adjust. A lot of times people will put Parmesan cheese in meatballs. I don't include cheese, okay, because it messes with my stomach. I don't eat dairy. If you wanna use cheese, go right ahead. Um, so we've got all the ingredients for that. Without further ado, I guess let's just begin, huh? First thing that we're gonna do is saute the pork chops. So you don't have to do this, but if you brown the pork chops first, then you can kinda saute the onion, which is gonna be the next step, in the, let's call them drippings, um, and that'll make a nice base, plus kinda just putting raw meat into the sauce, even though it's gonna cook over many, many hours, you could do that, but I think to brown it first is definitely preferable. So what I'm gonna do, you know, we're gonna think, okay, what are we gonna saute them in? Could use olive oil. I have some rendered bacon fat, which, you know, has a super high smoke point, very, very heat stable. Should you really be using olive oil, especially extra virgin olive oil, to saute, or should you be exposing it to higher heat? Not really. If you're gonna heat a fat. It has to be something that's more heat stable, something that has a higher smoke point. The bacon fat, now I keep this when I make bacon. Okay, I drain all the, quote, grease into this jar and I save it because I don't use butter because um, I don't consume dairy. If I ever am in the mood and I want to put, um, you know, on a piece of toast, I use this and it's delicious. So I'm going to scoop a little bit maybe a tablespoon into the pot. We're gonna use that to saute the pork chops. Crank up the heat a little bit. Hit these bad boys with some salt. Oh, look how nice these are. And of course, when you're using meat in a sauce or whatever, yes, you do want to include something that's on the bone because you know a lot of collagen and goodness in flavor is gonna come out of the bone and it's definitely gonna add to the flavor of the sauce or the soup or stew, whatever it is you happen to be making and definitely good nutrients in there. Let's drop these bad boys in. While the pork chops are getting nice and brown, I'm gonna dice up some onion. If you're asking yourself, why does Evan have a cutting board on top of a cutting board? It's because when I'm cutting onion or garlic or any type of aromatic, obviously the cutting board is gonna pick up the smell to some extent. And um, I don't want everything I cut on that cutting board forevermore, whether it's onion or garlic, I don't want the cutting board to make the food taste like that, because that's gross. 
Uh, so I just keep this cheap little cutting board and I use that to cut onion and garlic on. Set this aside. I got the tomatoes ready to go. There's something I want to talk about. We open these tomatoes, right? I don't even know how you pronounce the name of the brand. Muti? Muti? Right? But don't be one of those people where you try to pronounce something in a way that you think sounds authentic, but it doesn't. So you just sound like a chooch. So for example, people all the time take, for example, the word calamari. If you were in Italy, someone would say calamari, right? Okay, they put their accent on it. You know what they don't say? Calamari. Nobody says that. Don't be that guy. Um, makes you sound stupid. Uh, it's embarrassing. And people in Italy are laughing at you and mocking you and they hate you. No, I don't know if they hate you, but just don't do that. All right, those pork chops are simmering away while they're doing their thing. Let's get started on the meatballs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I like to use more bread than breadcrumbs. I still use breadcrumbs, okay? I've got some here, but they're really only to adjust the moisture level in the meatball mix. So what I'm gonna do, cut the end off the bread, and we're gonna kinda dice it up. We're gonna cut pieces like this. Now, I do it a little bit differently than it's probably meant to be done. You're supposed to remove the crust and all that. Honestly, I just cube it all up and I like the texture that it makes in the meatball. A lot of times you're just supposed to rip, you know, the guts out of it. I just use the whole thing. What I will do though, is cut the bottom edge off and not use that, because that's a little too tough. Otherwise though, I'm just gonna cut it into these little pieces here. And then you soak it in milk. And again, because I don't use milk, I use a little bit of oat milk. All right? And you end up wringing it out at the end. So it's not a huge deal. Let's check these pork chops. Oh. Come take a look at these. And the good thing is because we're cooking with that bacon fat, it's not all smoky, all right? It's, uh, it's just cooking nicely, not burning, none of that. I'm gonna put one more piece of bread. I've only got a pound of meat here, so don't need to use that much. And I apologize, because a lot of you are probably saying, well, Evan, how much bread? I don't know, dude. I couldn't tell you. I just kind of go by the way that it looks. Um, I've been doing this for so long that I know if it's going to be too much or too little. Um, and I kind of just go by sight. So, I don't know. How many cups is this bowl, does it say? I don't know, maybe like two or three cups or something. All right. Then you soak it in milk. So there, look at these pork chops. See how they're all nice and brown. You, you know they're ready to go when you start to see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but see there's a little bit of juice starting to come out and it comes right out on top. That's when you know it's ready to be pulled. So I'm going to set these aside and take a look in here. We got all the bits from the pork. I'm going to add the onion directly to that with just a little bit of oil. And because it's going to be on low heat and I'm going to cover it, 
that's cool. It's not gonna, it's not gonna burn and get like, I don't wanna caramelize the onion. That'd give it a whole different flavor. I just want the onion to cook, soften up, become translucent, um, and then I'm gonna add the tomatoes to it. That's gonna start the sauce, but let's get back to work on those meatballs. So, like I said earlier, there's really only a few things that are gonna go into the meatballs. The bread, which is currently soaking. We're gonna put some garlic, only a little bit of garlic. Now, listen, I lived in Italy for four months, all right, when I was in college. You know what I didn't taste the entire time that I was there? Garlic. You can't go to any Italian American restaurant without everything just tasting like garlic. And you wanna know something, quite frankly? It's disgusting. I despise it, I loathe that. I hate when my mouth, for hours after I eat a meal, tastes like garlic, I'm burping it up. And guess what? No one wants to smell your garlic breath either, it's disgusting. So, do not, all right? I don't care what you're making, do not overload it with garlic. You don't wanna know what I think? I think when you suck at cooking, you just put a bunch of garlic in it because you're like, eh, fuck it, you know what? I like the taste of garlic. Everybody likes the taste of garlic. So even though I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, it's gonna taste like garlic and everybody likes that. Don't do that, that's pathetic. So when it comes to the meatballs, we're gonna put like one clove of garlic, maybe two, and that's it. And that's for an entire pound of meat. Okay, there you go. See that? Two cloves right there. That's what we're gonna use. And that, honestly, is plenty. Watch people making dishes and they'll be like, now put, um, you know, 10 cloves of garlic. Oops, I should be doing it on this cutting board here. Just give it a smash like that against the back side of the knife, all right? And that'll dislodge it from the skin so that it comes off easy. I'm just gonna cut this garlic up as fine as possible because I want it, I want it to disperse as much, right, throughout the meatballs. You don't want big chunks in any particular meatball, right? If it's, the bigger the pieces, the better the odds it could end up really concentrated. I don't want that, right? When I'm eating a food, I want to taste that food. If you're going to add something like garlic or any other flavor to it, it should really be to accentuate it, not just make it taste like that one ingredient. It doesn't matter whether it's a type of herb, an aromatic. And one thing that drives me crazy is just the overuse of garlic. Ugh. Things like that, raw onion. And I'm not saying don't consume it, but when you're cooking, I don't know. Sometimes it's better when you can actually taste the food, no? All right, so that's minced up pretty fine. Do not use that minced garlic that comes in the jar. That stuff's disgusting and gross. Don't do that. Always cut it fresh. All right. These onions are done. I'm gonna dump the tomatoes in. I just dump them in whole, all right? Juice and all. There's a little bit of puree left that I'm going to scrape into there. Now, some people will use some paste, puree, things like that. I always just use whole tomatoes. And what I'll do sometimes is just puree it a little bit. All right, and then still leave chunks of tomato. I like when there's big chunks of tomato in the sauce, but you also want it to be smooth to some extent, but you don't want it too smooth. Right, this, is, this is a very delicate, precise balancing act. Now, Meatballs, because that's gonna start coming up to temperature. Put the lid on that for now. The meat, got a pound of ground beef. 
I'm gonna put in there and I'm going to kind of stretch it out inside the bowl so that I can, you know what? That's even too much garlic, I could already tell. See, it's already kind of spread out in there. It's plenty, we don't even need the rest of this garlic. Fuck this garlic. Next ingredient, we are going to grab some parsley, eh, about this much. And unlike some people, I include the stems. The stems actually are arguably one of the more flavorful parts. Um, I don't go crazy, just kinda, ah, smell so nice. Just kind of a rough chop. I'll put that in there. I'm gonna put three whole eggs. So this is where we're at, right? I'm gonna take this, wring out the excess milk, add it to this, mix it up. All right, and that's what you're left with. And that's gonna make the meatballs so nice and light and fluffy as opposed to dense and pasty and homogenized and disgusting. All right, add that in. Might be a little much, I'm gonna pull a tiny little bit out. I'm gonna add some salt. And I'm gonna mix this up. And I'm gonna use the breadcrumbs to just adjust the moisture. Basically, once you mix it around and you can pick it all up at once and turn it, that's how you know it's the right level of moisture. Almost there. See, I'm starting to be able to pick it up all, all at once. So all in all here, maybe I used like a quarter cup, or eighth of a cup of breadcrumbs. Basically want to use the least amount of breadcrumbs possible. All right, I've got the oven on 350. It's been on 350. It's ready to go. I've got a small sheet pan here. I think this is technically a quarter sheet pan. And I'm gonna just roll these up, put them on there, bake them quick, and they're gonna get dropped in the sauce along with the pork chops and along with the sausage. So I don't make them too, too big. Just kind of grab a little bit, roll them together, and boom, there you go. And with the fresh parsley in there, and because the chunks of bread are kind of big, they're not dense, okay? They're just very lightly put together. You don't want to be eating meatballs that are like lead. And let's be honest, there's not much in these, right? Nothing bad. Meat, parsley, eggs, some bread, a little bit of oat milk, garlic, and salt. But if even that is too much for you, we got those pork chops, and that's just straight meat. You're not gonna go wrong with that. So even if you're really watching what you're eating, you can still give yourself a nice portion of protein via the pork chops. And yeah, I don't know why people shy away from pork so much. Like, oh, pork, it's bad meat. A lot of the pork is very, very lean. Pork now, uh, at least as I understand it, isn't like pork from the 50s, even the 60s, where it was, it's now bred to be pretty damn lean. And if you're trimming any visible fat from it, it's a pretty lean meat. 
Right? The other, the other white meat. Come on, you can't just eat chicken your whole life. Have some pork. I'm telling you. If you've never done it this way, this is the way you want to do it. I mean, if you were adding cheese to this, let's be honest, it's going to be even better tasting. But depending on how you feel, how simple you're trying to keep it. And like I said, I don't consume dairy only because when I do, I feel like a bag of dump. Really, a couple rules with the, with the meatballs, right? A, don't use too many breadcrumbs. B, not too much garlic. And C, the most important rule of all, no onion. Onion is for meatloaf. These are meatballs. You do not want to be eating little tiny balls of meatloaf. It's disgusting. No onion. Wow, look at that. Perfect fit. That's what she said. I'll pop those in there. In the meantime, let's see what's going on. Oop. The sauce is up to temperature. So obviously what we've got here, you got some nice big fat tomatoes floating around. I'm gonna break them up a little bit. I'm gonna get out the immersion blender and I'm gonna puree, I don't know, let's say half of it. The remaining half, I'm gonna just lightly break them up. Somewhere you're gonna have a nice smooth sauce, but also some nice big fat chunks of tomato. Very nice. Got an immersion blender here. Right, is that what it's called, immersion blender? Stick blender? I don't know. Chop your finger off. Oh yeah. So really like half the pot here, I'm gonna subject to the blender. Remember, don't go crazy with this thing. You're not looking to make soup. Those big tomatoes in there floating around, I'm just gonna kinda bring them over here to the side of the pot and cut them in half. So let me tell you what's gonna happen next. The meatballs are cooking. I'm gonna chop up a little bit of parsley, put the parsley in the sauce. Honestly, I don't get into the basil, oregano. Uh, it all sounds nice, but I like just parsley in the sauce. Then the pork chops, okay, are gonna reside at the bottom of the pot. Next in there is gonna be the sausage. And when those meatballs come out, the meatballs are gonna go on top, the lid is gonna go on, and that thing is gonna cook for the next six plus hours until that pork just falls apart. So let's chop up some parsley. And I always leave some for when it comes time to eat because I like it just cut fresh and then just put on top before I eat it. Right. Just a rough chop in the pot. Don't need to add any garlic because the meatballs have garlic in them already and the meatballs are gonna really help to flavor the sauce. So no need to add that, there's nothing else. What are we talking? Onion, tomatoes, the pork, the sausage, the meatballs. What are the meatballs made of? Ground beef, we got bread in there, a little bit of oat milk, garlic, parsley, whole eggs. That's it, so I mean, pretty simple dish. There's nothing really funky in here. All right, I'm pretty confident these are ready. Oh, I had a little piece of bread toasted for myself because I'm gonna slice up a meatball on a piece of bread. <laughs> That's a little snack. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna leave these right there. What I'm gonna do is, well actually, I'm gonna prepare myself that little snack because I'm about to add the sausage and everything else to the pot and the sausage isn't cooked. I probably should cook the sausage first. I don't know why I feel compelled like I have to make the, the pork chops first, have to cook those, but not the sausage. I don't know, I can't explain the things I do. out on here. Make 
Oh. You have no idea how good that's going to be. So I'm going to put the pork chops into the pot first because they're flat. They kind of sit nice at the bottom. I'm going to take this pork sausage. I'm going to cut it in half. Don't need the pieces that big. Just drop those in. Then the meatballs. Drop the meatballs in. Just let everybody get covered up. This is gonna be so good. And that's gonna cook for the next, I don't know, five, six hours. It's gonna be so good. I'm gonna cut this in half because I'm a nice, because I'm a nice guy. I'm gonna leave half for my cameraman. It's incredible. It's amazing. Dude, try that. Seven hours later. Where are we? Like seven hours? It's been, it's been like seven and a half hours. All right, the pork chops are at risk of turning into liquid pork at this point. It's, they're so tender. Um, I've got the water boiling here. I got some pasta ready to go in. Look at these. I don't know what they're called. I usually like rigatoni, right? These are big and fat like rigatoni, but no lines, right? Rig would be the ridges, the lines in it. So I don't know what you call these, but they look fantastic. So, into the bath, into the pool. Let those cook. Wait till I show you what's in that pot. You know, I gotta say, you might be sitting there thinking, Evan, why are you showing us this meal? Because, look, I've been doing this a long time. I was in the sport at a high level for many years. And that means foregoing a lot of time with family, friends, you know, everybody else is having a dinner and you're sitting there with your food. And that's all cool. Look, you gotta do what you gotta do to accomplish your goals. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when you're able to, okay, don't be a hero. Have dinner with your family, all right? Have a meal with your friends. You gotta remind yourself, you're gonna live once. I'm pretty sure, unless, unless maybe we live multiple times, I'm not aware, right? But you gotta keep in mind, there's a very real possibility this is the one shot you've got. I'm 40 years old, all right? It seemed like yesterday I was 20. It goes so fast, man. You got one shot to enjoy it. And you've got, everybody has goals. I've got goals. And in order to achieve those goals, it takes sacrifice, it takes discipline. You literally and figuratively have to push the plate away oftentimes. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when you don't have to, eat that fucking bowl of pasta, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends, and um, just try to enjoy your life because you only get one shot. Showtime. Like that trick, huh? You like this trick? Look at this, look. Get out those goofy pot holders. Don't be like that. And what you do, you don't want the pasta to all stick together. You certainly don't want it to stick to the pot. So let it drain. Get it back in the pot and hit it with a good bit of olive oil. Not only is it 
delicious, but it's going to keep it from all clumping together. I'm going to go easy and work in the direction because once, as you can see, right, I already cracked, I cracked one. Fucking jerk. What we're going to do, let's get the pot over here, the sauce. <laughs> Wait till you see what's going on in here. <laughs> hey, look. Oh my God, look at that piece of meat just came right out of there. There's the T-bone from that pork chop. Clean off the bone. A little stir. And that pork chop, that big piece of pork, watch. I'm just gonna push on it with the spoon. Just come right apart. All right, it's ready for prime time. Let me give this broken one. I'm just give this broken one to my cameraman. For you, Tony. All right. Just gonna spoon a little bit of sauce on it. Let's see. Let's get a meatball in there. Piece of sausage. A couple pieces of pork. Because he's such a good cameraman, I'm gonna hit it with some fresh grated cheese. Of course, it just kind of like melts as soon as it hits it. That's it. You know, and the, the cool thing here is you can adjust. You don't want too many carbs. Have a couple pieces of pasta or don't have any at all, right? Stick with the pork chop. You could put a whole bunch of pork in there, a lot of protein. I'm telling you, there's not much fat. You could make this work how you want it to work. Or you go all in, enjoy yourself, okay? Nothing wrong with that once in a while. You could still do that. I'm going to tell you right now, all the top pros do that, and they go on stage at the Arnold, at the Olympia, okay? And they do their thing. They can do it. You could do it too. Take some time. Spend it with your friends, spend it with your family, enjoy yourself a little bit, live life. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.